I believe that the human being is the most amazing learning entity on the face of this planet. We have the capacity to learn in spite of what we do to each other in society, in our systems, and even in our education system. We are learning entities. We're sponges if we choose to be that way. Now, our systems of education don't always allow that to happen. Um, and that's something that I think I've been working towards changing. It's been an important thing for me. Um, I also believe that there's never been a better time to be a learner. <laughs> All the world's information is in the palms of our hands. The things that we can do with technology today is just staggering. It's just amazing. There is so much that we can do. If you've got a question or you're curious about something, that chances are you can find an answer on YouTube or Google it or, you know, now with uh, AI, if you know how to write, ask the right questions to qualify, you can get some pretty interesting answers. So it's, um, it's an amazing time to be a learner. All the world's information is available to us and we just have to work through it, discern it, access it, aggregate it, assess it, evaluate, and then work with it. It's an amazing, amazing time. Now, I've been working in the field of education for almost three decades. Well, probably a little bit more than three decades. And I've seen some amazing things happen and I just see amazing potential. And I have been working diligently for the past several decades at creating significant learning environments and immersing my students in those learning environments by giving them choice, ownership, and voice through authentic learning opportunities. In essence, I ask my learners to build something real build a project, create something, build something that will make a difference in other people's lives. That's part of my core belief. Learning is this amazing activity that we have to make meaningful connections. We don't have to do it alone. We can do it collaboratively. But the key thing is we work in the world and the environment around us. And we work with what we know. We work with what we don't know. And we add to what we no, by with the new things we're taking in and we create meaningful connections. This is an amazing way that we learn and function. And everything I do in my learning environments, in my classes, in my courses, and in my life is designed to help make those meaningful connections. This is what I believe. This is what I hold to. What do you hold to? What do you believe? This is an important question that you need to think about. You have an opportunity in this course to really put down your thoughts about what you believe about learning. I'm going to point out some resources on my website and you can take a look at my learning philosophy. I've got a whole section that deals with learning. So you can read all about my beliefs on learning. But you get to put your ideas down. We've given you a bit of a structure. We've asked uh, or provided some general uh, prompts and questions. But the key thing is you want to actually put down your beliefs about learning, not about teaching, about learning. What do you believe? What do you hold to? What is important? What are you passionate about? What's working? What's not working? What are your core beliefs, right? And what have you done? What have you done recently? What have you done in the past? What do you hope to do? These are the questions you need to explore in your learning manifesto. Now, I just want to clarify, for the assignment, you are going to be telling us what you believe about learning. Okay, we've given you some questions or some prompts to help you. But essentially, you're looking at a declaration of your beliefs and intentions about learning. We want you to consider what you're truly passionate about and why. Identify what is happening in the world today that is important, that leads to something that's working, something that might not be working. You know, we live in a digital realm. We've just come out of a, a situation where the whole world has moved into an online learning environment. Things are changing, lots of opportunities, lots to consider. Okay. We, we want you to consider what's right and wrong with education and what can you do to fix it if there's something wrong. And if it's just 
wonderful. Well, even something wonderful can be improved. What do you plan to do to enhance and fix it? This, these are your ideas. This is your starting point. Okay. What is your core belief about digital learning and the impact you hope to make? Okay. What are you going to do about your learning environment is essentially what we're prompting you to consider and think about what you've done in the past. You know, you might have been working in this field for many years so far. You know, talk about some of those things. Where have you been? Where are you now? Where do you plan to go next? These are going to be important things for you to consider. So we've given you some prompts. And at a minimum, if you just address these prompts, that's the minimum. You should do okay. That's B-level work, right? If you go well beyond this, you know, you have the opportunity to do much better. You know, we're not necessarily evaluating you on what's right or wrong. What we're doing is we're taking a look at how well are you going down these, you know, these pathways that we're laying out. We're asking you to consider some things. We're giving you some prompts as a starting point. And we're telling you that this is a starting point. They're only a starting point. And if you just do the bare minimum, a bare minimum in this course, in this program is generally going to be a B. We want you to go beyond the bare minimum. We want you to do a lot more. What format should it take? Well, um, you're probably going to want to write it down for the most part. You might want to create a bit of a video uh, to start and clarify things. But the issue that you're going to run into is that if this is just your starting point, if you haven't done this before, I really would encourage you to consider writing things down. Why, why is that? Well, let me just take you to an example. On my website, I have a whole section that deals with learning. So I've got a learning philosophy. You'll be able to build out your learning philosophy in another course, but this learning manifesto is a starting point. So I talk about a variety of different things. You can take a look at some of my ideas, some of my research, my approach, right? And you can take a look at my beliefs, my professional learning. What do I do to grow, right? You can consider those types of things. My development philosophy, right? My learning development or educational development practice. What am I doing, right? You can see all the work that I've done. So you have an opportunity to put down what you believe. You have an opportunity to talk about the things that are important to you. This is your learning manifesto. This is your opportunity to explore, to, you know, create a starting point. Because over the next year or so, you're going to look back at this many, many times. In another course, you're going to develop a learning philosophy. You look back to the learning manifesto. As you go through um, the course on publishing, you might look back to your ideas on, on learning. When in the final capstone course, you're going to have to actually look back at your whole learning experience and talk about everything and take a look at where you started, where, you, where you've grown and where you are now and where you plan to go next. So this is a wonderful opportunity through the learning manifesto that you, we were asking you to develop to really put down a wonderful starting point of where you're at, perhaps where you want to go and where to next.